What's up, Chris Crone here, and um, check it out. I'm in my custom 6x6 Jeep this morning, and I just finished mounting a 50 caliber gun to the roof, and we're gonna go shoot it for the first time. And I'm meeting up with some buddies, some military buddies, to really make sure that we fire at the right time, because we're gonna blow some stuff up. We're definitely gonna have some fun. But this is all brought to you by the American tax system. Literally, the vehicle that I'm, that I'm driving right now, the government helped pay for, and I gotta tell you, I love the American tax system. People complain all the time about taxes and paying too much in taxes, but me, I love paying taxes and I really love the way the system works because if you know how to work the system, you can help build the economy and get the government to kick in some crazy tax benefits. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my top three favorite benefits. Let's go. One, 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 one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. I'm turning dreams into reality. Yeah, it's one all one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. All right, check it out. We're getting the gun set up and we got a target out there and we also bought some watermelons. So we're gonna see if we can uh, hit those targets. Okay, so I promised you in this video I would tell you my three favorite tax benefits. I'm gonna give you my first one right now. It's real estate. I was financially free by the age of 26 because I bought 25 homes. Here's what a lot of people don't understand about real estate. When you buy a piece of property, the government lets you depreciate it over 27, 28 years. What that means is that if you take the whole value, let's say it's 300 grand, and you divide it by 28, that's gonna turn into thousands of dollars that you write off every year. Well, your cash flow is also thousands of dollars. The depreciation is always bigger in, like I said always, but like in literally almost every situation, every piece of real estate I've ever owned, over thousands of homes, I'll tell you that the depreciation is greater than the positive cash flow. Do you know what that means? It means that as you write the house off, it cancels out the cash flow, which means your cash flow is tax-free and there's leftover money that goes against your other income which is why for the first seven years that I bought real estate, even though I had a job for four of those seven years, I didn't pay taxes, period. I was making multiple six figures, about half a million dollars before I started owing taxes. And so real estate is a beast. And so here's what I love about tax code. I'm gonna share these with you. There's five major tax benefits to real estate. Number one, you get to write off the properties, taxes, interest, and insurance. So those are expenses just like they are in a business and the government lets you write them off. And what that does is that plays against your income and means that you pay less to the government when you buy real estate. Why would the government do this? Because if you buy real estate, you're supporting the American dream. It means that you're helping build the infrastructure of the company because people either need to buy homes or rent homes. And we need to have enough homes for growing population. So the government is big on this. Number two, there's the depreciation. You get to write off that property like I was talking about, which is gonna cancel out most positive cash flow for me, almost it, literally all positive cash flow. That's all tax free. So by the way, I buy a property, it's producing $500 a month of positive cash flow. So $500 extra in my pocket every single month all year, that's six grand. And guess what? I'm not paying taxes on a single penny of that. Now multiply that by hundreds and thousands of homes. This is serious. Uh, number three. You get, to you get to take the leftover depreciation and cancel out other income. So after it cancels out all the positive cash flow, there's still leftover depreciation benefit you get to write off against other income. The fourth part of real estate on the tax benefits is that long-term capital gains can be reduced or even eliminated or taxed at a lower rate. For example, if you own a property and you live in it for two years and then you rent it for five years and sell it, you don't have to pay any capital gains. But capital gains also means it's usually designed to be a smaller tax against normal taxes. So when you eventually sell real estate, you get a tax break. 
But then that leads into number five, something called a 1031 exchange. It says, if you want, let's say that you made $150,000 on the sale of property, you don't have to pay taxes on that even at all. You don't have to pay capital gains as long as you roll it forward with a special tax code 1031 exchange into more property. Or you could keep the property and then you could do a refinance and pull money out and that's a non-taxable event and still roll it into more property. This is how literally people start with nothing and in two or three generations become worth hundreds of millions or billions of dollars because they never pay taxes. I don't pay taxes on my cash flow. I roll it forward. It's absolutely amazing. So that's why the first of my three favorite tax benefits that apply to you and me and all of us in this country is real estate. So the second major tax benefit that I love comes down to big, large equipment like vehicles, right? We all need vehicles to drive us around. I look at my real estate in it. I use them for running my business. If you have a business, there's a way to write off a vehicle. Check this out. A business benefit in tax section 179 allows you to write off a 6,000 pound vehicle with at least a six foot one or larger truck bed. If you're in the top tax bracket paying approximately 40% in taxes, let's just say between federal and state, purchasing a $225,000 vehicle would allow you to save $90,000 and purchase a car instead of giving that money to the government. So that's what I did on this vehicle right here. By the way, this started it off as a Jeep Gladiator. The bed was shorter than six feet. What did I do? Chopped it off for fun, added a couple extra wheels. And now we've got a bed that's around seven feet long. So I love that the government says, hey, we know that if you're gonna do business, another way for you to stimulate the environment is by buying heavy machinery vehicles. Uh, it could be other things as well. And if these are necessary, genuinely, if they help you do and run your business, we'll write it off. Now, that doesn't mean the government's paying for 100% of it. So do not buy things that you that you don't want. It just means that at a top tax bracket, you might have the government kicking up to 40, 42% between the federal and your local state government to actually pay for it. So think about that for just a second. This vehicle, I basically, because I really wanted it, I got a 40% personal uh, kick in from the government to help pay for this thing. I like that because a lot of my life is filled with come here, come here. things like this. Check it out. Once you start owing a significant amount in taxes, let's say you have a successful business or multiple, you might start paying millions in taxes. The moment you start paying over a million dollars in taxes, there is larger scale equipment from this that might be useful for you. For me, one of those is a private jet. It's basically a flying car, right? And I use my jet to fly around and, and do all sorts of business deals. And flying private, it's about 10 to 15 times more expensive than first class. But if you know what you're doing, thanks again to section 179. And if you follow all of the rules, what I do is I take my jet, I use it for business. And the reason why I get to fly for free and even have that possibility is because when I'm not using it for business, guess what I'm doing? I'm chartering it out and other people are paying five, seven, ten thousand dollars an hour to basically charter my private jet. At the end of the year, I take a look at all the time I spent flying, conducting business and all the revenue that came in from chartering. And it turns out if you do it the right way that you get to fly for free. Now, remember, it's 10 to 15 times more money to fly private than it is first class. So imagine having your own private jet all to yourself, but free instead of paying 10 times more than first class. I'm rigging the system in my benefit, but the reason why I'm doing it is because the government so lovingly has basically teed up this tax code and uh, it's not a loophole. It's not getting out of something. It's basically saying, I as a responsible citizen that wants to make more and more money and pay more and more taxes is going to basically build part of my life around the kind of expenses that have particular benefits that can justify doing the entire game. Does that make sense? Why? wealth. Like why go for it? Like why, what's the whole purpose of scaling a business and buying real estate and doing all these things? My buddy, Jim Dew, who is one of my financial advisors says, what makes wealth real? Like if you're going to go for it, what would make it meaningful? In the beginning, it was about freeing my wife from not needing to work because having a crew was not her passion. Having a family and children and time with me was. What also made wealth real for me was that my parents they had nine kids. I'm number four and they didn't plan for retirement because they poured all their money into their kids. So I even knew as a child that I wanted to be financially successful so that I could give back to them. And I know you may feel the exact same way, right? Giving back to people that you love and care about. 
Um, another thing that's super important to me is philanthropy. Like um, I'm planning my next trip to Ukraine in a couple months. We're going to be bringing seven figures of relief, specifically medical supplies near the front line to people that are dying without these finance, with, without these medical devices. And, um, and I feel called to do that. Um, but today I got to, you know, I got to have fun with my friends. I got to let them fire the gun and we got to come out here and we got to share an experience. All of this took money and more money for me doesn't equal more problems. More money equals more options. And so that's just something that I really appreciate about this entire game, but don't get me wrong. You have to play it intelligently. And what I want to do right now is I want to share with you two things that will help you play it as intelligent as possible. The first of the two strategies I already gave you, if you're going to play the financial game, then instead of fighting against taxes, work with them, get smart, learn the system and learn how to play it intelligently. The second thing is you've got to move from one single source of income to multiple. The average millionaire has seven streams of income. And today I talked about real estate. Everybody should own real estate, but Chris, I'm not passionate about it or I don't know how to do it. There are people out there that know how to. I partner with experts in other fields so that I can be in other industries and win. If you want to be in the game of real estate, but you're not super passionate about it, just the money it can make, then I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to partner with me. As in the link below, there's an opportunity for you to learn about partnering with me. If you've got equity in a home or a 401k or IRA, and you want to earn better on your money and are sick and tired of single digit ROIs and want to learn how I can do 25 or 50% of year on the money, then I've got a track record on now nearly 7,000 homes that I've acquired well over a billion dollars worth in total real estate. And what I do is I partner with people, they put up the money, I do 100% of the work and then we split the profits. But the reality is we keep rolling it forward, building more tax benefits and winning as much as we possibly can. Click the link below, learn about partnering with me, get with my team. And if we partner, you'll have my cell phone. We'll connect with each other. I'll do the heavy lift and I'll show you how to start building and adding more intelligent streams of income. By the way, I hope you enjoyed today's video about tax planning. There's more aggressive strategies on how you can reduce taxes and it has to do with how you structure your estate. And if you wanna know what that looks like, click this video next and let me teach you what to do and what not to do.